Yes, people actually they have increased their trading activity uh, following the Brexit and uh, following the brokers uh, lowering the market requirements due to the Brexit. Uh, there is a lot of political developments happening in the UK and also developments in central banks of major currency pairs. So it's a very interesting time. Uh, I don't see uh, forex traders uh, going into summer mood yet. Uh, because there has been during the winter and spring session the the trading activity ha was lower due to high risk of Brexit and other things that they have been discussing about raising the rates in USA. So people and traders, market participants are coming back now and they are increasing their trading activity uh, during July, which is not a usual case uh, happening every year. So. It's a very interesting time, and I expect a very busy summer. It used uh, to be saying that uh, selling may go away. I think that uh, this year turned into buying may come back, right? Yes, uh, we, we can say that as well. It's something that um, this kind of models, uh, they are followed by the most of market participants. So we see a reversal of this kind of model at the moment, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially in the market that uh, at the moment S&P is making like all-time highs. Yes, and that one as well. If we look into it, does this give you any kind of a chill that it is similar to what happened actually in 2007, that we were having also all-time highs at that time and then we, bam, the market crashed? Yeah, it's, um, it's a similar uh, situation. We, we were used to see at 2007 new highs and new highs. However, uh, that was uh, the market overshooting and uh, reacting on uh, on this case, uh, overreacting actually. And, and behind these new highs, I believe that the same drivers are uh, are working again in this way because at that time, mainly the central banks were buying the equities, and the same is happening now as well. So reading some articles uh, why the S&P and the Dow Jones are making new highs at this point in time is because while the investor they don't buy. So, uh, so the driver behind it is that uh, the central banks are increasing their asset purchases on equities. Especially if you look into bigger uh, central banks like uh, SNB as an example, we can see that yes. they have increased massively uh, their US stock uh, shares that uh, they mm -hmm. have been buying. So, and one thing that I'm actually uh, worried personally that we saw a relatively lower low on, on S&P right mm -hmm. after we saw a all time high. This is this is a little bit worrisome for me. But anyway, let's let's uh, discuss about it a little later. But what about uh, Brexit? How is it being perceived from your perce uh, perception towards uh, GBP trading at the moment? I think that uh, the problems are still in place for the UK and for the British pound. Uh, nothing has changed. The only thing that uh, has changed is that the prime minister is changing at the moment and uh, the new Prime Minister that is coming up is more certain that is going to go for the Brexit. So it's, uh, it's removing a kind of uncertainty from the market and is stabilizing the expectations about the Brexit and, and that is, um, has helped the British pound to recover uh, and some of the um, investors and the traders to unload they are short positions at the moment. So it's giving a retracement and giving a chance to go short again. So uh, we, are, we are just looking into people buying the word stability. Is that what you are telling? Yes, it's, uh, I will say, stability and certainty because now they see a new head in the UK government, which is uh, making some stability in the decisions of the UK government at the moment. However, um, it's a short period. I think it's going to be short-lived. This buying um, momentum at the moment on the GBP USD, and it's actually giving us a chance to reposition on the short side and take a better price uh, for that because uh, Brexit is still in place, and with the new prime minister, is 
most likely to see it earlier than before. So uh, I just heard one one word uh, out of everything that you have said. For, uh, I mean, as a trader, uh, mm -hmm. reposition yourselves on a short side. What do you mm -hmm. really mean? Yesterday we saw, like, uh, I'm looking at some of the GBP pairs. Uh, there has been a rally on uh, like 500 pips or so. How mm -hmm. how do you reposition yourself? Uh, well, uh, as Adamas. Actually, like GBP Japanese Yen rallied 647 pips in one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is that when we have a downtrend uh, in the market, uh, we need to see a retracement in order to consider the downtrend as healthy, right? So the market is taking a breath in and then follows uh, to the existing direction. So over the weekly time frame, we see that there is a downtrend. It has been uh, it went down to 35 years lows, so this uh, retracement should have been expected anyhow. And uh, most likely uh, it's going to continue because it's uh, on a downturn path. Um, we will see a retracement. Political developments has helped that. Um, we should have expecting this uh, retracement at some point because uh, the market was already oversold. And uh, there needs the major, the major risk risk taker, right? Sorry. There needs to be, in short, some risk takers to to just buy it, and mm -hmm. and probably. Do you also think that yesterday's uh, well, long uh, on on GBP entries were mostly mm -hmm. because of the Carney's speech that they will be having more stimulus? Do you do you think that they actually intervened the market? I think that uh, we will see a stimulus from the Bank of England, and this is actually going to weigh further on, on the U on the pound because when they add more money in the market, uh, the GBP is getting um, farther uh, farther away. So uh, another thing that I would like to discuss is uh, all the market participants they have on the on the Friday on the 24th of June when we saw the outcome of the Brexit. Everybody has been expecting that, uh, has been speculating that uh, the Bank of England will do stimulus. And now we're talking about 0.25% cut tomorrow on the interest rate. However, uh, we should also think the scenario that the uh, Bank of England will reduce the rates by 0.5%, not by 0.25%, because uh, usually uh, Mark Carney doesn't uh, come up and talk about stimulus, and this time he talked about uh, stimulus so clearly. So in, uh, there is, in my head, I have the expectation that we may have a surprise tomorrow, and the stimulus and the rate cut will be uh, more than expected to 0.5%. That one, if we see something like that, then um, the 1.3268 level that uh, it is now, um, it's not, it's the expectation that there is a 0.25% rate cut tomorrow. However, if we see 0 0.5, then GBPUSD will uh, revive its downside. So it's um, we need to follow the events. There is the risk of uh, having 0 0.5 rate cut. And uh, by doing this, uh, the GBPUSD, I think, will re resume uh, its uh, downside, yes. I like, actually, the view that you are giving, because for the last, I don't know how many months, each time the market consensus has given something about the UK economy or the the British pound, the actual result has been the complete opposite way or much mm -hmm. worse. So uh, I, I can I can just imagine uh, around six months ago we were we were discussing about monetary policy divergence that yes. uh, that the UK was going to hike the rates and mm -hmm. uh, just six months after, we, we are now seeing, forget about the rate hike, they, uh, they are they're cutting it. And now we are even talking that it's not just, uh, well, 0 0.25, but uh, it, is, it, it is actually 50 base points, possibly. So uh, yeah. possibly there, there will be the, the opportunity there. But uh, I see that you have the chart open in front of us. Uh, where do you... It is the the cable. 
where do you actually expect the the market to rise or or fall from uh, from from cable perspective? Okay, let's uh, have a look at the intraday uh, chart, which is the four hour chart. And here, uh, what I can see, I, I have uh, our update Fibonacci from the top at 1.5014 down to the 35 year low at 1.2808. And I can see that uh, the GBP USD has retraced up to 23.6%. And uh, also we saw previously a resistance level there in the last uh, two, three weeks. So this level, it uh, can be considered as a, a resistance that we need to consider if the GBP USD can overpass it. In my opinion, um, tomorrow we're going to see a rate cut for sure. The market has discounted that and uh, they have discounted a 0.25% rate cut. However, um, if we see, uh, however, it's a major event and the market, the GBP USD market is likely to continue sideways ahead of the Bank of England. So the 133.35 could be the limitation uh, in the medium term. When, when I say medium term, I mean on the next one, two weeks. So I consider this as a level that the market will stop the upside. And uh, we already see a candle developing to the downside on the intraday. At the moment, we see a candlestick which is indicates some reversal here. It's a dodgy candlestick. So in my opinion, 133.35 could be uh, the resistance who is going to stop the recent retracement of the GBP USD. But if you were a trader right now, would you actually sell it at this current level? If you were to trading this right now? I will follow in a lower time frame because this is what I'm going to do. I consider this resistance level as a strong one. I consider uh, the short term market as overbought. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm expecting a reversal in the lower time frame. And if I see a reversal trading pattern in the lower time frame, I will follow it. Okay. And uh, do you with a well, stop loss, of course, uh, at one thirty three thirty five, I think, uh, or even slightly above that, I think it's a good stop loss. Do you do you think that tomorrow we might actually see some kind of lamb chop? Let's call it a funny term. That uh, we would be seeing the market reacting on downwards and then shooting up and then going downwards. Yeah. Uh, this scenario, mm -hmm. the technical uh, outlook right now, we are looking for. I think it, it, it resembles something to me that uh, that we have seen before. And mm -hmm. I made myself a very big loss that time. It was, uh, it was the 29th of uh, February, uh, well, where uh, the the... US uh, GDP announcement was coming up and we saw a similar thing. People were expecting one thing uh, and complete opposite thing took place. So I, I, I'm convinced that actually there is a possibility for the cable to rise further uh, and uh, mm -hmm. further meaning actually I'm, I'm looking at towards uh, 136, 60, 50 level more or less. So, uh, what's your opinion on it? Can, would you be actually expecting it? I do not exclude any possibility. <laughs> All right. So, it's it's, uh, that's why we put the stop loss level anyhow, right? Because uh, we have uh, anything can happen in the market. Um, it, it could go to 136, 136.50 if tomorrow Mark Carney cut the rates to 0 0.25 only. And uh, also the new uh, Prime Minister in the UK, Theresa May, will be more uh, certain about what is going to do with the UK Brexit. If we see a possibility that uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a second referendum, because it's something that is discussed and it's very possible to happen, uh, chances are increasing that we may see another the referendum. They're going to discuss it on the September 5th. In, uh, in the UK Parliament. So <clears throat> this kind of uh, developments in the fundamental side
could uh, could raise the GBP USD. Yes, it's not it's not something that uh, uh, I exclude. And of course, uh, technically, um, there is a downtrend. However, the retracement could go up to 38.2 percent of the Fibonacci level, um, and and the downtrend will still remain even if it will go to 38.2 percent. So yes, it's uh, it's a very it's a likely possibility to happen, and uh, but with the support and the resistances in in place, we can also look that um, the downside could resume from this point as well, from 133.35. Uh, the next uh, resistance, as you said, is around 136.50, which is a 38.2 percent Fibonacci level. And it's also it's the level that uh, we saw the weekend or uh, the overall gap uh, taking place for the pair. And at the same time, we have two things happening, two different things happening uh, in, the, in the UK. We have the political developments with the new prime minister, and then we have the Bank of England. So it depends if these two are going to work in coordination or if they are going to work uh, on a different dynamic. So that will also impact the GBP USD. And um, yes, that's it. All right. Uh, well, from my perspective, looking at this pair, I'm actually, I'm not often uh, worried about entering a position. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, you know, uh, Forex trading is based on the, for me, it's not based on what is the return. Uh, the way I, I trade the market. I, I'm always looking into what is actually the risk that I'm taking. So at the moment, uh, I see the risk being greater than the return. So therefore, I wouldn't actually personally take any short or long position, uh, especially if we look into the one hour time frame. Uh, and if you are to put uh, two moving averages, uh, 20 and 100 moving average, which I follow on hourly time frame. Uh, I can see that the, the pair is following the price action at the moment. So the the recent uh, dip from the uh, well from the uh, all the way top of uh, one third three third three level to, to the down where we are at at, uh, at the moment it seems like it's part of a price action development because we don't still have any uh, you know uh, lower low at all even on hourly time frame. We have been having only a higher high and higher lows, which is an indication that the, the long-term, uh, well, intraday long-term positioning should be uh, on, a, on the bullish side. Meanwhile, though, if that uh, level is penetrated, I'm, I'm talking about 130 to 45 level, it, it is likely that, uh, well, to be more precise, 130 to 37 level. Uh, we could then see possibly the pair tumbling down some uh, 70 to 170 pips down to 88% Fibonacci retracement zone that I, I'm always using. And that makes actually 1.3063. Then we could possibly see the, the pair rising and shooting up. And this could happen tomorrow before the, the actual uh, well, rate cut, uh, rate cut or rate intervention, whatever you call. So if that takes the place, then it, it becomes a big likelihood that, or big chance that the market is going to be giving us from 1.3065 level or so to, to the, all the way up to 1.3650 level. But then the, the big news hits you uh, that the overall market sentiment, no matter what the, uh, what Carney comments, whether it is a 50 base point or 25 base point, it is likely that we will be seeing the bearishness continue. Uh, this is something that I'll agree with you, that all these moves that we are seeing is just, they're, they're all just an opportunity for us to reposition ourselves on a bearish side. And uh, any bullish attempt, is not uh, supposed to be entered with a with the usual entry size that traders are doing. We we have quite a diverse background of people here that I can see. Uh, so 
they need to understand that the bullish attempts are there to reposition yourselves uh, unless you want to be part of the lamp chop game uh, for tomorrow. But anyway, back to you, uh, Adamos. This was just my, my personal opinion on uh, on table. Yeah, actually, I agree uh, with you. Okay, we'll have some difference in the timing. However, one important thing that I keep uh, is that uh, the volatility has increased in the GBP USD in the last month so much. So it's the risk of trading it is very high. And um, yeah, we need to be cautious when we trade the GBP USD. And we need to compare our risk with our uh, reward target as well. Um, so the next, shall I go to the next uh, currency pair uh, that I was planning sure. to talk about? That would be great. <clears throat> OK, so the next one was mainly the USD yen that I was planning to talk about. We saw the Japanese yen um, decreasing in uh, value because there is a risk appetite recovery in the recent, in this week, in the recent dates. We saw the bond yields going down, going up because the demand for the bonds have been uh, falling. As we said before, the S&P 500, Dow Jones, they have been making new highs. Uh, Nikkei made a new high today, not a new high, Nikkei has been also trading higher today as well. And uh, that is increasing the risk uh, appetite. The risk appetite has been squeezed so much in the previous uh, month and in, until the previous week as well. So this was a recovery uh, reaction from uh, traders who have been seeking for safer assets as we discussed the previous week webinar as well. So we see in the USDN on the weekly time frame that is making a bullish upside candle and that is giving is not has not closed yet, but is giving the recent uh, direction, the short term direction in the market, and we see that it's going towards 105.54, which is a strong resistance level. Uh, on the daily time frame, we see a reversal trading pattern in the daily time uh, daily time frame. This is could be considered as a double bottom uh, formation or a failure swing formation. Uh, that we explained in previous webinars as well. Again, the 105.55.57 is as a resistance level at the moment. Uh, we have uh, we had some uh, elections on Sunday in Japan. Shinzo Abe, who uh, the Prime Minister of Japan, got a confirmation vote, and uh, he's planning to add fiscal stimulus. We saw Ben Bernanke having discussions with. Um, uh, head of the central bank in uh, in Japan, Ben Bertaki w was the the man who had the idea of helicopter money. They said that they discussed this issue at the moment. Um, what I consider that uh, there is going to be at the end of this month in combination of fiscal and monetary stimulus by Bank of Japan and the government of Japan as well. So this is likely to weaken the Japanese yen further. So with these developments. We see the market reaction and the market expectation uh, growing towards stimulus and monetary fiscal and monetary stimulus coming up by end of July, <coughs> and that is driving the USD yen uh, higher. If we see the intraday time frame again, we see a strong resistance at 105.55, um, and uh, we are going to watch the. Uh, reaction at this resistance level for the USD yen. If we see uh, continuing stock recovery and stocks strengthening, then the USD yen is likely <coughs> to rise above the 105.55 level. And um, it's important to watch the USD yen because we have a lot of discussion around adding more stimulus. Um, the Bank of Japan has been waiting for so long and uh, have in our expectations and in the market expectations, the USD yen dropped below levels that they have been expecting Bank of Japan to intervene. So the chances to see uh, intervention are very high. But it seems like it's going to be a coordination between fiscal and monetary uh, officials. So the next one uh, that I was um, thinking to discuss about is the gold. So 
<coughs> we see that the gold over the weekly time frame has found a strong resistance at 1375.84 and um, this week we see a bearish engulfing candle developing not uh, closed yet and uh, all oscillators have been overbought so the strong resistance with the overbought oscillator was a good combination and to expect a retracement of the gold and uh, in addition to that uh, market is waiting today for the Chinese trade data where they expect uh, imports and exports to drop however uh, it's expected to show a surplus at 46.64 that uh, I'm saying that because Chinese trade data will either strengthen the risk appetite or uh, limit the risk appetite at the moment in the market so if we see um, a lower than expected uh, trade data for um, China or lower than expected imports it means that one of the biggest economy in the world is reducing the imports and that is decreasing the demand for commodities and for the gold in uh, consequence so uh, currency commodity currency pairs like the Aussie and the Canadian could get a hit uh, in the daily uh, time frame we see that the gold is on an uptrend we see two bearish candles developing in the last two, two days uh, we see the 20 moving the 10 moving average here uh, penetrated that's a weakness uh, signal however I'm not usually using the 10 moving average I'm using the 20 and uh, given uh, that the gold is trading versus the US dollar we saw recently that um, yesterday in more specific we saw James Bullard, one of the of Federal Reserve officials who is a voting member for the 2016 saying that and reiterating his opinion that he would expect uh, one rate hike over the next two years so he is more dovish and um, with that uh, in mind we wouldn't expect any uh, vote, any rate hike in 2016 uh, from James Bullard <coughs> and at the same time we saw yesterday Goldman Sachs saying that uh, the Federal Reserve is likely to return to rate hikes soon because of the NFP uh, we saw strengthening NFP the previous week so we have <coughs> a lot of discussion around rate hikes I don't expect to see any rate hike this year unless we see strengthening of economic data from the US side I think or Goldman Sachs see is see just using the, the word in order to to make some PR on their names, it's it's whatever th what they commented was just uh, nonsense actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, there is this uh, discussion as well about uh, having another referendum again. So if we see reversal of the um, of the sentiment on um, Brexit, then uh, that uh, then Federal Reserve could it will not raise, increase the rates, but could return into discussion about raising the rates. Well, uh, it's it, there is a lot of pot pots in, in inside, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> the, the big issue inside uh, Goldman Sachs commentary in general is that you know they are always uh, commenting in order to to make some kind of sensation in the market because they are a yes. bank. This that. However, let's not forget that they are also the one of the main parties who who caused the world to go into crisis back in 2007-8 with their uh, crazy smart uh, trade ideas that they took. So if we, if we look into uh, to gold, we can see that uh, the market really has, uh, has made uh, clear, especially on weekly time frame, clear highs and uh, clear higher lows as well. And whatever the, the market move uh, is, is there at the moment, it's just you know part of the the traditional way of a retracal, not not reversal. There is a big difference between a retracal and a reversal. So the current retracement in the market is because of the fact that uh, you know we always discuss it that when the market is uh, too far from the moving averages, uh, let's make this 20 so that it's cl uh, clear. When the market is too too far from the uh, 20 moving average, it's generally not a good idea to to buy. And it's indeed uh, good to expect the market to reverse back uh, and test that 20 moving average. Indeed, this is exactly what's happening at the moment. The market basically 
reverse from uh, 261.8% Fibonacci retracement zone. This was uh, something that we, we projected it last week, if you remember, that uh, this is going to be the, the retracement level. So from here, we are expecting the market to touch the 20 moving average as, uh, as a primary goal. But there is also a possibility, a bigger possibility that we can see during the course of this week or maybe early next week that the market is going to be testing 1300 level. Indeed, uh, yesterday in our private uh, investment group that we have, uh, we were discussing where to place a possible pending buy limit order. For gold, it is, it is actually at, to my mind, uh, 1300 to $1,303 level per ounce. And from there onwards, we can actually expect to, to see the market reversing back and, and going on, on to a bullish side. I'm showing some uh, something over here on my mouse. If you can see, if you have big screen enough, you can see the level I'm pointing to is actually $1,506. So this is my, my, my target for the coming uh, two, three months, maybe a little more than that. But by October, November, we should be expecting or we could possibly be expecting the 1500 level. So if you are trading gold, be careful. All the bearish uh, reversals that you, you can define are actually retracement levels, not reversals. And uh, they are expected to be short lived, not a long lived, not a long term reversal levels. And uh, if the world continues as it is uh, at the moment, especially uh, with one forgotten news that came from, uh, well, that came about China yesterday as well, that, uh, that the Hague uh, court ruled that uh, China's, uh, South China uh, Sea operations have been so-called internationally illegal, and uh, the islands that they have occupied actually belongs to Philippines. So it's also going to be adding more tensions. Don't, let's not forget about the fact that China is actually the second uh, arguably the first uh, largest uh, economy in the world at the moment. So if they tend to, or if they see the, the, the things going crazy uh, and they take uh, crazy measures, uh, I like the word crazy when it comes to Chinese uh, central bank, because they do in, indeed take crazy measures. Uh, if you remember last year, we had the China stock market crash and because of their uh, unorthodox way of uh, taking measure, the, the market re, uh, reversed and indeed since then we haven't really seen any kind of a market uh, well crash again from China but the, uh, the rest of the world so it's going to be another uh, key driver I want to also very fast talk about uh, one of my favorite currency pair because it involves uh, low risk overall and uh, th this is the euro Swiss franc if you remember since the April of this year I've been commenting that Anytime you see the market hitting above 1.10, it is the time for you to, to look for a sell opportunity. Or, or even if it hits the 1.10, it is a sell opportunity. So uh, if you see the, the possibility for tomorrow that uh, Carney, uh, Governor Con uh, Carney will be commenting that uh, the stimulus would be actually 50 base point, we can uh, possibly see the the rise towards uh, 1.10 level one more time. But uh, remember one thing, it is not going to be the buy opportunity. You will be indeed looking for shorting the pair. So look for short opportunity for uh, Euro Swiss franc between 1.10 to the level of 1.1045, 50 level. And this is going to be the, the overall uh, well trade opportunities. My personal uh, tradable level for this pair would actually be uh, any time, doesn't matter this year or next year that it triggers, uh, it, does, uh, it has no significance. But uh, you can also consider placing a sell limit order at uh, 1.108 level because of the fact that it's one of the most significant uh, well resistance level.